Hello. Let's talk about dementia. Dementia seems like a hopeless disease, but I have some really good news to share with you. I've worked with dementia patients and their caregivers and learned so much from them. I've learned that the way the mind works is the same from person to person in this way. You can choose to think about things that make you worry or things that make you happy. A person with dementia seems to have less choice about this. The mechanism within the mind that chooses what to think about is malfunctioning to some degree and they're left knowing something is wrong with them, but not sure what. Over time this can be very upsetting, but there's really good news, so hear me out. Three quick things. Dementia is a broad category which includes Alzheimer's. So if your loved one has this disease, this applies to you too. And by now you've heard the word Alzheimer's enough. So I'll be referring to it as dementia. But I also mean Alzheimer's. Also, if your loved one is a she, I'll be saying he for clarity so I don't have to keep saying he or she. He will have to do. Thirdly, what I'm saying now is not for sharing with your loved one. This is me introducing you to the program you need to make his life better. Back to what I want to share with you about how we can help your loved one. Dementia carries with it a wonderful opportunity. What could that be, you're wondering? Why? That's why I developed this program. So I could offer you that opportunity so you can pass it on to your loved one. I spent two years with a dear friend in his 90s who had dementia. As it progressed, he became more dependent on me to understand what was going on around him. And then he would promptly forget whatever I told him. It became impossible to reassure him for more than a few minutes. But fortunately, I never grew impatient because I understood that that was just another opportunity to hone my reassuring words. I recorded them so that you can play them back over and over for your loved one with dementia so that he will be reassured and you will get a break from repeating yourself. I understand your plight as a caregiver. I've worked 24 hour days. I've watched someone I love decline. I made these tapes for your relief and reassurance. You do a wonderful thing, hands on helping. You have my love and respect and you have the benefit of my deep connection with someone with dementia, which allowed me to experiment with my reassuring words and feel when they were resonating over and over, night and day, in all kinds of situations. I was able to find the right words and put them in order and reassure my dear friend. The first benefit I enjoyed was that I could tell the same jokes over and over and he always laughed like it was brand new because to him it was. I discovered that the cornier the joke the more he liked it. So the tapes I've made for your loved one are interspersed with corny jokes. You may not find them so funny but that's because you don't have dementia. A person with dementia is feeling mentally off balance. My friend, a musician, before dementia made it impossible to play, but referred to it as playing on the black keys. It was like he, was thinking, he wasn't thinking clearly enough to maintain his dignity. I became closer to him by bridging this gap between my mental clarity and his fuzziness by stepping into his world, and one of the ways was with corny jokes. If the guy who knows what's going on can risk embarrassment with a joke as corny as that, he reasoned. I must be okay, even though I'm not on top of my game. No one is being too critical here, and I can relax and have a chuckle. Do you know how wonderful that is? That moment of relaxing and chuckling and knowing everything is okay for now? Through my connection with my friend, I began to understand the guy with the malfunctioning brain had something to teach me, something wonderful, his wonderful gift to the world, his enabling me to piece together an antidote for the pain caused by dementia, a devastating disease with no cure, and for now, at least, no treatment. 
but now we have an effective treatment. Let me explain that first because people cannot see how there could be anything good about dementia. You wish your loved one did not have dementia. Why is that? Well, duh, because dementia causes him to slowly deteriorate, to not be able to care for himself, and his personality to be lost to you. It's devastating, I know. But you want him to be spared this grueling path because you want him to be happy. You want him to be happy and reassured that he is loved. And as a caregiver, you want him to be occupied, happily occupied, so you can have a moment to care for yourself. That's fair. You're worried too, you're worried about your loved one, but now you have a way to worry less. If what you want is your loved one's happiness, and you do, I can help you. That is what you want, his happiness, moment to moment. If you can't have a cure for dementia, you can be satisfied with the best alternative. That's a pretty good consolation prize, is it not? Yes, it is, my friend, and I am so thrilled to be able to offer it to you. When you're ready, just click on the playlist and the group of videos will play one after another for as long as you like. As you hear my happy chatter in the background, your loved one will grow accustomed to my voice and find it reassuring. He'll know he's about to share a happy thought with me, something that helps him settle into the situation by focusing his thoughts on happy things. The sound of my voice will become his blankie, his binky, his teddy bear, and the journey, however dawning, will be less of an ordeal because we'll keep him calm and happy. It's not a cure, but it takes the sting and the sadness away for a little while. Of course you love him, so of course you want to make the decision to do what you can to let him be as happy as you can. You want my advice? Do whatever works. That was my guiding principle as I guided my loved one along the path. I reassured him, day and night, that no matter how much he seemed to have lost in the way of independence and ability to communicate, I knew he was still in there, still himself, and your loved one is the same, no matter how faded he may seem to be. And you still have a loving gift to give him. You still can give him happiness. And what better gift is there to give? Happiness. I'm offering it to you so you can offer it to him. That's what this program I developed can do. It can make him feel happy and reassured moment to moment for as long as he is suffering. When the suffering is over, as it will be someday, you'll have the consolation of knowing you did something that lifted his spirits in his time of need. He needed your help and he got it. That, my friend, is love in action. Make the choice for love. My part will be the playlist, and your part will be to reinforce my efforts with efforts of your own, which will lead you to a much easier time in dealing with his dementia. First, let me say that the things we're sharing now don't need to be shared with your loved one. One of them is our strategy for getting him to his happy place. We'll guide him there with what I call emotional guidance. The hidden benefit of memory loss is that it removes resistance to emotional guidance. Anyone who has worked with a patient with memory loss would naturally want to help him improve his mood. It's surprisingly easy because the patient is looking to others to find out how he should be reacting to the present situation. He is looking for emotional guidance already. Very common questions from a dementia patient are, are there any visitors expected today? And what should I be doing? And what time is it? These questions reveal the emotional condition of the patient. Are there any visitors expected? The question is generated by the patient's feeling that he is somehow unready to entertain visitors. He is aware of the difficulties, his lack of a functional short-term memory pose, and is insecure about how that appears to others. Another question, what should I be doing? This touches on his feeling that he's not being useful, as he probably was in the past. Dementia is an affliction of the short-term memory at first. The long-term memory is left intact until the final stages. He can remember being independent and productive. Now he is aware that he is 
no longer. He wants to compensate by doing something. The third question, very common with dementia patients, what time is it? It makes little difference what time it is to the patient because he's retired, has no important schedule, and can no longer do what he was once capable of. But habit leads him to ask this question over and over. The emotion most often felt by dementia sufferers is insecurity. Over time, continu continued feelings of insecurity erode self-esteem. In addition, our society regards wrinkles, gray hair, wheelchairs, walkers, hospital beds, bedpans, depends, and similar items as symbols of weakness, feebleness, inadequacy, and old age. It doesn't help that in his younger days, the patient has probably followed society's directive and sees these symbols in the same negative light, and the people who must depend on these items with pity or revulsion. When it dawns on them that they are now in a position where they must be, depend on these items, they judge themselves. As they judge themselves to be unworthy, their self-esteem erodes. Little by little, the situation gets worse, maybe because of the way they perceive themselves, or maybe because of the dementia's effect on the brain. It seems to be a one-two punch. We can block the first punch by guiding the emotions of your loved one. Emotional guidance deals with these memory loss problems by guiding the patient again and again to challenge false ideas and flawed judgments in a cheerful way. The general level of emotional vibration is raised. A better mood is induced. A better outlook replaces the negative group of thoughts. Repetition is employed and over time the habit of happiness can stick with the patient. But relief is seen immediately in the moment that the caregiver delivers emotional guidance to the patient. The consistence we bring to the thought life of your loved one will eventually bring noticeable results. For example, rolling a wheelchair up beside the bed of a patient with dementia who has lost the ability to walk will often precipitate negative emotions. Even after using the wheelchair daily for several months, the dementia patient sees a new item a wheelchair has just entered his world. He can't remember he can't walk. He can't remember he uses a wheelchair. It's all new to him because he has no memory of seeing the chair before. A quick phrase to take the sting out of such moments and set a cheerful tone is, it's not a character flaw to have a problem with your balance. That's pretty hard to argue with. It puts the patient in a more positive light than he'd been holding himself in. It's the same with the patient who needs help with toileting. It's not a character flaw to need a little help now and then. With this technique, you can counter the words he is saying to himself. His inner critic is saying words within him that mean he is somehow unworthy and his character is flawed. His life has come down to this sense of failure. He can no longer be vibrant and independent. He looks at himself as a loser. <laughs> No, he is not. Shut the inner critic up by talking back with his correction of his flawed logic. It's not a character flaw. It is not a character flaw to need a little help. We all need a little help at different parts of our lives, and some people forget that. They forget that at some point they needed help or will need help again. Part of our beautiful humanity is that we give help when help is needed. Along these lines, you might consider referring to his dementia as a little forgetfulness. A little forgetfulness is perfectly normal at this point in your life. It is normal for everyone your age. And it has its benefits. You can't remember bad stuff either. And I'm here to remind you of the good stuff. That is a plum assignment because it makes us both focus on good stuff going on right now, so we both get to be happy. Another way to guide him emotionally is to point out beauty. Lead the way by noticing everything and anything around you that you can focus on and appreciate. Move from the default setting society insists we adopt, which are task-oriented, and change that setting to appreciation-oriented. You'll get the task done while you appreciate beauty all around you. 
What beauty, you ask? Use your senses. What do you smell? If you don't like it, get out the Febreze or light a scented candle and make a note to notice change in a few minutes. Now you're in a room with a beautiful smell. Notice it and point it out to your loved one. Look out the window for more beauty. Look at the sky. Look for the evidence of the wind. Any small bit of nature will do. A leaf, a bird, sun and shadow, rain or snow. You don't have to overlook a vast wilderness to see nature. You're appreciating it so you can give the happiness it brings to your loved one. So you need to zoom in on it, and in doing so you understand that it consists of vast oceans, skies, mountain ranges, and also minutia. There is beauty in minutia. Point it out. If your loved one is playing on the black keys, this change of tone the simple appreciation of nature is more welcome than if he didn't have dementia. The dementia is causing voids in his mind. We're using emotional guidance to fill those voids with happiness, with appreciation for beautiful smells and sights. And uh, we'll also use sounds. But before we leave the sense of sight, we'll point out that colors seem to have meaning to a dementia patient more than for you and me. You can point out colors by saying, look at that beautiful red blanket of yours. Wow! He may respond by mocking your enthusiasm at such a small thing, but he most likely will follow your lead towards appreciation. That is emotional guidance. That is our task, our healing of our loved one, moving him along gently from feelings of inadequacy to feelings of appreciation. We're moving him from sad to happy. Is there a higher calling or a task more worthy given you right now? Appreciate that you have an answer. You can relieve the pain of this disease. You are a powerful healer with this tool of emotional guidance. Put it to good use. We've learned ways to guide your loved one emotionally, and they all begin with the letter S so that it's simple to remember. We'll notice things that are beautiful all around by using our sight. We notice good smells. And we use scented products to create an atmosphere that smells wonderful. And we use sounds to present beauty. Music can be breathtakingly beautiful. Use what's available. Use what you know about the preferences of your loved one when it comes to music and play it often. It'll never get old. Besides music, there are many more pleasant sounds available. Any type of comedy that contains a laugh track will suffice. Without having to have a deep understanding of what and why it's funny, your loved one can just follow along by consensus, joining in with a laughing crowd, and maybe not knowing why. It's the same result, happiness and a feeling of connectedness. Laughter is a wonderful, uplifting, mutual, and beautiful thing humans do. And humans have always proved in tight situations that no situation is too grim for a laugh. Dementia is a tight situation. And laughs are warmly welcomed. We're looking for beautiful things to focus on so we can guide your loved one's focus there. We are guides, the best kind. It's nice to have a guide when the territory seems so unfamiliar and we don't feel we can find our way by ourselves. But you can find your way to happiness by learning how to follow the trail, noticing beauty all around you using sight, smell, and sound to guide his emotions. So click on the playlist, try it out. Please share these videos with anyone you think they could help. And leave comments in the comments section that will help others bear the burden you're bearing with courage in the face of this frightening disease. It won't seem so frightening if we all face it together and we'll be so much better when you see your loved one distracted by the good thoughts in the playlist that can trigger and sustain his happiness.